Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today I'm going to show you eight new lures that are actually quite old. If this is your first time here at Retro Bassin, and if you have an affinity for the old school like I do, we're talking rods, reels, lures, equipment, and even electronics. Stick around, watch us fish with some of this old school stuff, consider subscribing, and definitely drop a comment down below. Okay, so this video is gonna be the top eight new lures that have old school roots. You know, one of the cool things about bass fishing is that there were some amazing baits made back in the olden days. A lot of those great old baits got discontinued, but lucky for us, some of the modern tackle manufacturers actually pull some old school ideas. Stick around. Summertime is all about big body crankbaits like this one. And just about every company from Strike King to the Guggen Squad has a version of this fat bellied square build crankbait. But most don't know that the first of this style bait was developed back in 1967 from a whittler in Tennessee by the name of Fred C. Young. Fred, who was recovering from back surgery at the time, started carving lures as a hobby and developed this bait, a fat-bodied, square-lipped crankbait. Fred's lure test at the time was his brother Otis, and that was the namesake for this bait, the Big O. At the time, this bait was on fire. You gotta keep in mind, BASS was just starting up and the pros were trying to do everything they could do to get the edge onto competition. Um, I was watching an old BASS video and one pro was referring to this thing, said throwing this bait was sort of like throwing a pork chop. And you can believe it. I mean, at the time, they did not have those medium heavy, heavy, extra heavy action rods. We're talking about those six and a half foot um, whips that I use out on the boat. So you can only imagine throwing a big old bait like this would have been tough. But in shallow water around stumps, woods, and rock, this thing was unreal. If you know anything about the history of this pretty cool bait, you know that Fred would actually custom make his balsa wood crankbaits and sell them in recycled egg crates like this. When demand exceeded Fred's ability to carve baits, he actually teamed up with Cotton Cordell, who mass produced the baits in a plastic version. This is a pretty similar color pattern to what Fred would use back in the day, and he signed every bait. This bait still has a huge following today. If you look online, there's Facebook pages dedicated to Big O Lures, and if you can find a Fred C. Young original, you're gonna pay at least 300 to maybe even 600 bucks for one. It's summertime in Texas, and boy do we throw a lot of these. Frogs from Lunker Hunt. This version, if you've seen it, is pretty cool. It comes with two kicking legs. This is called the Lunker Frog. It's got a hollow body, twin hooks, and look at that unique design. Too bad for Lunker Hunt that this has been around for many, many years. What we have here is the Bill Plummer Scum Frog. Bill actually lifted the design for his frog from a toy that his kids are playing with that looked a lot like this. The unique twist on Bill's invention, however, was this special weed guard that he designed and patented. Just a metal wire with a double prong that is designed to go right over the hook. Pretty cool design. Obviously, we don't see a lot of frogs with a hook down anymore. So here's a side-by-side -side look at the Bill Plummer frog and the Lunker Hunt Frog. Look at the similarity in those legs. Again, the only real difference would be that Lunker Hunt is hollow belly with the hooks pointing upward. But I bet this thing still catches. When we think of buzz baits, you think of that traditional model with a single propeller and of course a skirt. But lately you see more and more baits like this. This is a uh, from Bass Pro Shops. It's called a Buzzin' Speed Shad. Standard buzz bait blade, but look at that. It's got a swim bait on it. Little did you know that this exact bait has been around 
for quite a while. Check this out. From Lunker Lore, the original Buzzbait company, they had this thing that came out with in the 1990s. This is called the Lunker Lure or Rattling Lure. Again, standard Buzzbait blade, but it's got more of a shad profile body. Pretty popular bait, kind of bummed they discontinued it, but I've got a boatload of these, and no doubt before summer's over, we're gonna be getting on the water with this guy. Okay, so you know, if you watch this channel at all, I am a huge sucker for gimmick baits. I'm also a huge Larry Dahlberg fan. So it's really no surprise that I bought this bait. Let's open this thing up. All right, check this thing out. It is basically a crankbait on the end with a single hook and a soft crawfish body. It's a pretty cool little bait, but no offense to Mr. Dahlberg, this design has been around quite a while. Here we go, the man from Tennessee, he endorsed a ton of awesome baits in the 70s and 80s, and this is one of my favorites, Dance's Incredible Crawl. It is a crankbait on one side, with a hard head and a soft crawfish body. It's got a single treble hook on the bottom. This bait will actually sink. You reel it like a crankbait, it'll sink down, dig in the mud, while the body floats up like such. I'm not sure which of these two guys would catch more, but I think we might have to do a little side-by-side -side challenge. Dolberg versus Dance. Fishing around the city of Austin, which has a few uh, rodents, this is actually one of my favorite baits. The Spro BBZ Rat. I'm a huge Bill Simentel fan, and I buy just about every bait he's helped Spro develop. I don't know if he had a hand in the BBZ rat, but I'm guessing he might. But too bad for Bill, rat baits have been around long before Spro. Here's one of the oldest rat baits that I know of, the Shakespeare Field Mouse. It's an all wooden bait with a shaved lip, sort of to make it dive like a crankbait. It's got a little string tail and two treble hooks. This thing actually functions a lot like the Spro BBZ Rat. It will float along the surface and just sort of wiggle along like a mouse is trying to swim. Next time I'm on Town Lake, I'm definitely gonna be throwing the Shakespeare Mouse. So I don't know if you guys noticed my Scott Martin shirt at the beginning of the video, but a huge fan of Scott Martin and what he's doing on YouTube. Anybody who's a big fan of Scott Martin knows all about this. It's called the Bad Shad, but you might better know it as the old Jerk Crank. So, sorry little James, this is actually a crankbait, not a jerk bait, but nonetheless, a pretty cool bait. Of course, you know me, I've gotta find the oldest version of this thing, and I did. Made from Rebel in the 1980s, we have the Mystic Shad R. It's a pretty cool bait similar to the Bad Shad. Plastic lip, shad profile, and because it was in that mystic line, it's got a really cool translucent look to it. Look at that. This would be an awesome jerk crank. I am a bit of a nerd when it comes to Rick Klun, and over the years, I've bought just about every bait that's ever had his name on it. Probably the most well-known are these, the Lucky Craft RC Baits. These crankbaits come in a couple different sizes, feature a squared off lip, and do awesome in shallow water around cover. But, some of you new school guys may not know that the RC bait has been around for years. Here are two versions of the original baits from Poe's Lure Company, the RC3 and the RC1. The year was 1988, and we're at the Bassmaster Classic on the James River in Virginia. Rick was fishing with the deeper running version of this, the original RC3. But what he noticed is the bass were actually coming down to hit the bait and they were not striking it as well. Luckily for Rick, the class would be held on the James for the next two years and that gave him time to develop this, the shallow running RC1. This is the bait that he used to win that 1990 Bassmaster Classic, such an iconic win. I remember as a kid when this thing hit, 
Um, this bait was all over Bass Pro. I mean, they had full page spreads with that 1990 winning bait. Of course, there's a poster of Rick uh, after he won that 1990 Bassmaster class. I even remember that Bass Pro Shops came out with this, the Rick Klun Pose Lure Kit. This is actually pretty sweet. It came in a uh, wood crate here, signed by Rick himself. And inside, you had four different pose baits. We had a couple super seeders. And of course, some wood chips for some reason. I don't know why they did that. Probably trying to clean up the uh, factory. There we go. RC1. What a sweet looking cedar bait. Eventually, Pose will be sold out to Yakima Bay Company and the RC line finally discontinued. You can still find those baits on eBay, but they are getting harder and harder to find. That being said, there is nothing I like throwing more than a classic RC1. These days, compact white spinner baits are a dime a dozen. But probably one of my favorites to fish is this one, the compact Booyah Blade. Spinner baits have been around for a long, long time, but one of my favorites out there one of the most steeped in history lures that honestly I think I've ever fished with is this one. The Oki Bug SOB or Small Oki Bug. This bait and its designer, honestly, they deserve and will get a full episode of Retro Bassin. Designed by the late great Mr. Don Butler out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Among the uh, accomplishments of, of Don Butler, um, one, it was actually helping uh, young Jimmy Houston get his start in professional bass fishing. He actually paid the entry fees and drove Jimmy to his first ever bass tournament. Don also helped a young man from Springfield, Missouri by the name of Johnny Morris convert his dad's liquor store, Brown's Derby, into what would become the most popular tackle shop in the world, Bass Pro Shops. And last but not least, Don Butler was the first ever member of BASS. At the time, uh, insurance salesman from Oklahoma by the name of Ray Scott was trying to get a bass fishing organization up and running and Don asked him how much it would be to become a lifelong member. Well Ray wasn't sure but for the price of $100 uh, Don Butler became the first ever member and a lifelong member of BASS. Don's contributions to the sport really are what made that 1972 Bassmaster Classic on Percy Priest so special. There, Don Butler won the second effort BASS tournament with his homemade Oki Bug spinnerbaits. You can still find that tournament on YouTube. It's actually a pretty cool watch. And at the end, you can see how excited Ray Scott is to be handing that trophy and that check to Don. Definitely look for a Retro Bassin episode coming up on the Don Butler Oki Bug. All right, well, thanks for hanging in there for our top eight new lures that are actually old. Let me know what bait you saw that you most want to see in a future episode of Retro Bassin. Until then, I hope that you fish it old school.